What is up, church family? So glad you made it today. I'm Pastor David, and we want to welcome to our online experience. We're going to have a phenomenal time in church. Last week, Pastor Danny kicked it off with a brand new series, and PJJ is going to continue today. So it's going to be an amazing time. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving as well. We want to know today, what is your favorite part about Thanksgiving food? Is it turkey, ham? Does anybody like deep fry their turkey? Is it mac and cheese, uh, green beans, or maybe it's the dessert uh, section or whatever. Like for me, pecan pie is my favorite. That's what I'm looking forward to every single year. So let us know on the comments below. We want to hear about your family traditions. Uh, and also, we want you to text a friend or a family member and let them know that church is about to begin. The more people we can get into this party, the better. So on Facebook, start a watch party. If you're watching at live.citylifesf.com, there's a share button right there on the top. So let's let people know that church is about to begin and it's gonna be an amazing time. As always, we're gonna about to jump in into a worship time. So let's get ready to praise Jesus.
I'm done with the heart and no reason to wait. Oh, my heart found the surgeon, my soul found the friend. So I run to the Father. Again. Yes, I'll run into your arms. I'm never too far gone for you, Father. I'll keep running and running. I'll run to the Father. Yes, I'll keep coming back. I'll keep coming back. You're right. today there's someone that is watching right now and you're saying that there's too much that I've done there's too many bad decisions that I've made how can God love me if I don't even love myself how can God love me if I'm not even proud of who I am he knew you before you were even formed in your mother he loves you and he has a plan for your life. Even right now as he's speaking to your heart, just run back into his arms. Just run back into his arms. Run to the Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the heart and no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend, so I run to the fire again and again and again and again. Hey church, every Sunday we have a generosity moment, and this is the time that we get to partner with God through the local church with everything that He's doing here in our city and globally. Here at City Life, we'll make it super easy for you to give. You can give through your phone, on the website, or even here on the donate button. Thank you so much for your generosity. This year, we were able to partner once again with the Navigation Center, which is a homeless shelter right across from our church. Because of your generosity, we were able to bless them with meals and games and different uh, things that they need to keep their shelter going. Shout out to all of our outreach team and volunteers for blessing once again our community right here in Bayview. Check out this video with some of the highlights. What's up, City Life Church family? It's your boy, Pastor Keys here on the block. You know how we do it with the God's God. We like to bless the block. We're here serving over 50 folks, unhoused folks, with a beautiful Thanksgiving spread. Hey, what's up? I'm Oscar, part of the outreach team. Usually during the week, I uh, help do the Oakdale Pantry. But today, for Thanksgiving, every year, I've been helping out here at the Bayshore Navigation Center. It's always good to come back and, and just, just help, especially here where our church is in the neighborhood where we see a lot of need. It's always good to come out and give back and serve, so, serve a great Thanksgiving meal and see the faces of people light up, light up with thankfulness and joy. It's a real good time. One year ago, to this day, I, the first time I connected with City Life, I was at this, this place. I met Pastor Keith for the first time. I met Elisa, some of the people that I met, at Javier, and uh, they just brought me in. They said, yo, serve up in pie. That's what I did. I was at the pie station. It was amazing. We got to serve like a hundred or so people. We, we served food that we wouldn't want to serve ourselves on, have ourselves on Thanksgiving. And it was such an amazing thing to do. I met some amazing people. And a year later, look at it, it's history. That's what it is. I hope y'all enjoying this new series, Attitude of Gratitude. We couldn't do these type of things without your generosity. So thank you for your generosity, your love, your uh, continuous giving in spite of these hard times. This is how we're able to do these amazing events and blessing uh, those that don't have right now. So thank you again. God bless y'all. See you soon. God squad. Hey, what's up, church family? Hey, I hope you had an awesome Thanksgiving weekend. Man, I want to just say how proud I am of our team here at City Life. The outreach that we just did earlier this week was phenomenal. Partnering with the Navigation Center down the street, we were able to feed a bunch of folks that just needed some love and some good food. And um, I'm so proud of Pastor Keys and the whole team that volunteered and our church's generosity. Thank you for giving so generously so that we can make a difference here in our community. Now, 
Man, some of us are struggling from all the food that we ate this week, and uh, I don't know what your family traditions are, but right now we're going to interact just a little bit. I want to know how many of you had some turkey for Thanksgiving. Now, if we were all in person together, I'd be looking for a show of hands because usually there's a handful of people that love some turkey. Some people love some ham. And then I say, how many of y'all had some ham? And they raise up their hands and we have different family traditions. But right now in the comments, let me know what did you enjoy for Thanksgiving this week? What was it that you celebrated with as far as food? We're going to talk about some entrees. We're going to talk about some desserts. Maybe you have some amazing crack and mac and cheese. Maybe you had some gumbo. Perhaps if you're Brazilian like us, like me, maybe you had some churrasco this week, some, some great tri-tip. Or maybe you had some lumpia. I don't know what your tradition is. Latinos, we always get down with some beans and rice. At our home, we had ourselves some turkey. We had some ham, some mashed potatoes. And when it comes to dessert, oh my goodness. I mean, the, the spread was phenomenal. What is your favorite dessert? Some of y'all love some sweet potato pie. Maybe some apple pie a la mode with some good old vanilla ice cream, right? Some of you guys like pecan pie. And then some, there's some unique people that like something called mince meat pie. I'm praying for your soul. <laughs> One of my favorite pies is lemon meringue pie or banana cream pie. Those are some of my absolute favorites. And uh, regardless of what you had or didn't have this week, I'm hoping that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. At the end of the day, we should all be thankful for what the Lord has done in our lives and what he continues to do for us. Amen. Hey, last week, we launched a brand new preaching series called The Attitude of Gratitude. And Pastor Danny Schultz from Sun City Church in Spokane came and preached a phenomenal word right here from this platform. And it was so good. And he talked about the fact that we are blessed people. And he says we have, he said, we have good news and bad news. The good news is that we are rich. The bad news is that we are rich. And he was talking about the fact that if we live in America, chances are we're like at the top percentage when it comes to wealth and just uh, what is available to us in our nation here as far as services and different things that we can have or accumulate. And he talked about the fact that when it comes to life and blessings, to be blessed, to, be, to, to have things, Gratitude is way more than what you can accumulate. And he was talking about perspectives, having the right perspective, because it's not what we have that determines how thankful we should be. It's not based on that. And he talked about the fact that when we are blessed, when God has granted us a variety of different things, that with blessings come responsibilities. Today, I'm going to continue this series and we're going to go for the next couple of weeks. And uh, I want to continue to explore this topic of what it means to be grateful people. Now, there's all kinds of different definitions, but let me give you the brief summary of what gratitude is. Basically, it's the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. That's what gratitude is. And Words that would be synonymous would be thankfulness or gratefulness or appreciation and probably a few others. When it comes to gratitude, it's the quality to be desired, but it doesn't come naturally. We have to cultivate it. We have to develop it. Gratitude or thankfulness is not easy when you're starting from scratch. But the good news is this is a quality that can and should be developed in all of our lives. Listen to what this doctor, Dr. Emmons, says when it comes to cultivating uh, an attitude of gratitude. He says, people who cultivate and consciously participate in gratitude are more patient. They make better decisions. They develop better relationships and generally feel more positive and optimistic about their lives. More so than those who do not display gratitude or have gratitude. Basically, what we're seeing here is that grateful people tend to be happier people. So what could it be? You know, people talk about the pursuit of happiness. Could the secret to, to happiness or the pursuit of happiness, could the secret, the solution, the answer to it be having a heart or an attitude of gratitude? If you're looking to be more content in life, could it be that God maybe has placed something within you and me where he wants us to be grateful and in experiencing gratitude from within, all of a sudden life becomes more enjoyable. Could it be? I remember years ago, uh, Pastor Elaine and, and, and I, we, uh, we took a team of young people. We were youth pastors and we took a young people to the Philippines. And uh, we were just talking about this recently and 
hanging out and talking about these great experiences we had. And so it was almost three weeks that we spent in the Philippines and where we landed was a very, very humble and poor community. Now these people were rich in their hearts and rich with joy, but as far as material things, they were very simple folks, very humble. And yet some of the most wonderful people I have ever met ever in my lifetime. We spent these three weeks with these young people there and um, our homes where we stayed, it's like they dispersed all of us into different homes and they were so honored to host us, Americans, in their homes. Some of the homes that hosted our team were literally cardboard boxed homes. Literally, the, the walls were cardboard boxes. The place that we stayed, they said, hey, the pastors are going to stay here. It was like, it was this wonderful house, wonderful family. And I remember one of the things that kind of shocked me at first, I walked into the house and it was, it was, it was a house kind of like a hut um, and there was just dirt floors. And, and then the room that we uh, stayed in, I'm six foot tall. The room must have been about five foot, five and a half perhaps, because I couldn't fully stretch. <laughs> And yet they gave us their master room and they were so honored that we were staying there. And I was so humbled by this whole experience. And one thing that we all noticed that as our team collectively noticed was that these people were so genuinely happy. Why? They were grateful. Even though they didn't have a bunch of stuff in the house and all the electronics perhaps and the comforts that we would have here in the U.S., they were so happy. They were so thankful and it marked us. As we were leaving on the last day there, they actually threw a big old party for our entire team and uh, they came and lavished us with gifts. They came and gave us all kinds of, not just foods and delicious things to eat and bring home, but all kinds of different souvenirs and things that were so dear to them. Even though they didn't have a whole lot, they still wanted to express their thanks to us for having spent three weeks with them. That experience, it marked me. And I began to just be challenged, even coming home and, and realizing, hey, the air conditioning doesn't work. That's OK. We have windows and we have fans and we can use whatever. And it caused me to have a different perspective on how truly blessed we are. Hey, let's explore for the next few moments the theme of gratitude through scripture. I actually researched this and there are actually hundreds of verses that would cover the topic of gratitude or gratefulness or thankfulness or, or thanks or thanksgiving. I mean, if you look at all these different words, there would be hundreds, possibly thousands of verses. But I'm going to show you just a few. Um, and when it comes to, to thanks, these are referring to our thanks to God, how we are encouraged to give thanks to God. The Bible tells us to thank one another, to thank God, to even thank those who oppose us. It's like, think about that. Love your enemies. And, but check out what Psalm says. Psalm 92, verse 1, it says this. It says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to the Most High. It's good. And we should do it. It's an encouragement to us. Psalms 105, verse 1, the psalmist says, give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Now, I love that right there because in our context today, basically what the psalmist is saying is, I like, listen, y'all, go on social media and post how good your God is. May your message go viral. Let the nations of the world see how good your God is, how good he's been to you. So give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Psalm 106 verse 1, I've read it a few different times and I noticed that this verse is actually quoted many different times, at least eight different times in the book of Psalms. Psalms 106 verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. There's been all kinds of songs that we've sung. And uh, maybe you're, if you've been kind of like doing this walk of faith for a while, you will remember some songs maybe from the 90s about Oh, give thanks to the Lord and so on and so forth. And I'll stop singing. I'll stick to my day job. But this verse right here, it just challenges us to give thanks to God, to proclaim how good he is. And there are so many other scriptures as well. I'm going to sprinkle some bonus material for this message right here. Have you ever noticed how Christians love to pray before their meals? <laughs> Some people, perhaps their prayer life, maybe I'm talking to you, maybe the only times that you slow down to talk to God is before a meal. And all of a sudden you'll close your eyes, perhaps you'll even hold your hands and you just thank God for the food that you're about to eat. Why do Christians do that? Where did this, where did this uh, tradition start? Who, who, who came up with this idea? Is it a mandate in scripture? 
Does the Bible say, hey, pray at least three times if you're eating three meals a day? Should we pray for the appetizers or do we wait for the main entree to come for us to finally pray? Obviously, there's different traditions. And in our home, our family, when our kids were younger, it was funny because we would have different ones take a turn to lead out in prayer. And all of us said, hey, so-and-so, lead us out in prayer. And then they'd close their eyes and sometimes we'd hold hands. And dear Jesus, they would say, thank you for this food. And then they would say, I pray that you'd make it delicious in our tummies. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, okay, make it delicious or make it yummy in our tummies. It's like, no, the yumminess comes from the tongue. But anyways, their idea was they're thanking Jesus for this food. Who came up with this idea anyways? Well, in the New Testament, you actually see Jesus a few different times. When he multiplied the bread and fish and served thousands, it says that he, he gave thanks to God. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it away. When he's having what the Bible would say or people would call the Last Supper with his disciples, Jesus, again, he thanked God for the wine. He thanked God for the bread, and then he gave it to them. Even in, in the book of Acts, right at the end of the book of Acts, Paul does the same thing. He thanks God for his food, for the bread, and then, and then he eats. So from that, a tradition has been developed where Christians, that's what we do. We pray for the food. And I think it's actually a pretty cool reminder to us. It's not a mandate or a decree or a commandment. Thou must pray over each meal. It's more of like a great discipline that we should have where we can slow down. Being that we have to eat anyways, we might as well give thanks to God as a reminder that he is our provider, that he's the one that provides our food, and we give thanks. Now, we also pray a blessing over the food. And if you hang out with me, sometimes I'm praying that God would just rebuke those calories because the food that I eat sometimes isn't the healthiest. Nevertheless, I'm going to talk to you about three characters in Scripture who displayed gratitude. Now, there's many, many more, and, but these are just three quick ones that came to my mind. I think in the Old Testament, in the book of 1 Samuel of a gal by the name of Hannah, back in those days, sometimes dudes would marry more than one wife. So it wasn't uncommon for, for, for a man to have two, three, four, five wives or whatever. In this particular case, Hannah is married to, to her husband and he has another wife and that wife has kids already. In their culture, if a woman was married and couldn't have children, it was like a curse. She was looked down upon. She was less than, especially if there was another wife that was having babies. Then it's like, dude, this is like the worst thing. Something is wrong with me. And it says that Hannah would go to the temple to pray and she would pray and weep and cry. And one day she was crying just so fervently to God, God, please. And she insisted and she basically makes a covenant with God, this deal with God. God, if you will give me a child, if you give me a son, I promise I'll give him back to you. <laughs> now, I know what some of you parents are thinking right now, like, could we return some of our kids too? <laughs> it wasn't quite like that. But basically, she's like, God, if you would just be so kind to me, so gracious to me, I I'll return him to you as a sign of gratitude and thanks. And not too long after, sure enough, man, she got pregnant. She had this child. And when he was old enough to, he was weaned and he no longer needed mom. She then brought him to the temple and said, hey, priest, this is your new intern, just a young little dude. And every year she'd come back and bring him a little coat and outfits and whatnot. But why did she do that? Because she was so exuberant with thanks. She was so thankful to God because God broke that curse off of her life. And out of gratefulness to God, she says, the least that I can do is give him back. Another example would be David. I think of David, who was a great warrior. He killed Goliath, a great worshiper. David was just such, a, such an awesome dude all the way around. One of the greatest moments in his life that is recorded in Scripture is when David was able to bring the Ark of the Presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant, back from the Philistine nation, back into his country, so to speak. And he brings the presence of God back. And when they bring the ark back into the city of David, here's the king who is just so dignified and royal and majestic. And he's like the, the most important dude in the nation. He starts dancing and he's just going crazy to the point where his clothes start coming off. It wasn't like a strip dance. No, straight up, this dude was just like so exuberant, so excited, so filled with gratitude that God would allow him this amazing privilege of having the Ark of the Presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant there, that he couldn't help but just give God praise through dancing. 
you know the story, one of his wives, again, they had multiple wives, one of his wives, she starts mocking him. The consequences of her mockery was a lack of children. But here's David, exuberant with thanks. Finally, another example would be in the New Testament, there's a story of these 10, 10 men who had leprosy. And all of a sudden, the word gets out that Jesus is going from place to place and he's healing people. And somehow, apparently, Jesus comes into to their region, to their town, to where, wherever they were at. And all of a sudden, there's this exchange where you have mercy on us and whatnot. And Jesus then instructs all 10 to go and present themselves to the priest because that was the law. That, that, that's what the law required. When you were healed, you would go and present yourself then to the priest who would examine you and then say, OK, you can now reenter society or your day-to-day -day activities. In this particular case, they were sent out and they weren't healed immediately, but on their way to present themselves. So they were acting in faith and in obedience on their way to the priest. All of a sudden they were healed. And this one man with leprosy, he realized, oh my gosh, I'm healed. And rather than doing the quote religious thing and following the law of the land, he is just so overwhelmed with gratitude that he actually, quote unquote, disobeys the instructions that Jesus actually had given them. And he runs back to Jesus and he throws himself at his feet and he began to worship him with thanks. And Jesus was actually honored and pleased with that. Why? Because gratitude and worship, it actually trumps. It, it's, it's above even the letter of the law. And this man realized, why am I going to that priest when I have this dude who is like the high priest and he came and he worshiped? These are three examples of people who, who the Bible records them being filled with gratitude. And all of a sudden there's some telltale signs that come with it. Here are two obvious traits or telltale signs of people who have gratitude in their hearts. Now, again, I was mentioning how years ago we would take teams of young people on mission trips, right? So my wife and I were youth pastors for many years. And one of the things that we would do on mission trips, oftentimes we're waiting at airports and different things. We would play cards. <laughs> and I remember vividly this one, one gal in our group. She was just outstanding, such a great young lady. Uh, but she had this one little what we call a telltale sign. If you're playing poker, it would be like it's, it's a tale where you're reading your opponent and they're giving physical uh, evidence that they may have a good hand. You know, they can't help but maybe like all of a sudden you start noticing like their, their heartbeat, their veins starts popping and bulging. Click, 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 click. Ooh, watch out. They got pocket aces or something. In this case, when she was holding her cards, we knew every time she had a good hand because she couldn't help but all of a sudden her pinkies would go up. She's holding her, her cards and all of a sudden that was like a warning sign. Stay away, back off because she's got great, a great hand of cards. Uh, another thing that she would do sometimes when she'd try to be a little more conspicuous, she would actually grab her hair and she'd start doing this. And, and all of a sudden we knew like, oh, she's got, she's got good, good cards. Those are telltale signs. What are the telltale signs of people who actually have been cultivating an attitude of gratitude? People who are grateful. These are some of the basic indicators. There seems to be two obvious trademark signs of people who are full of gratitude. Number one, I've mentioned it earlier, grateful people are usually happy people. They just can't help it, but they're thankful. And one of the ways that they express their gratitude is through just, I'm just happy. The second telltale sign is that people who are grateful are usually generous people. So they've been blessed and then in return, they wanna be a blessing either to the person who, who've already hooked them up or perhaps somebody else. So they're constantly blessing others. That seems to be one of those indicators, one of those signs. Watch what Proverbs tells us. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, it says this, the world of the generous, it gets larger and larger, meaning more full, more fulfilling. It gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy, it gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others, they are helped. What is the writer saying right here? He's like, man, people who are generous, their life becomes more full, more rich, just more enjoyable. But the stingy, it's like, man, their life is shrinking more and more. There's less enjoyment. It's interesting because grateful people seem to be generous people and happy people, whereas ungrateful people 
tend to be stingy and they tend to not be very happy. Have you ever been around somebody who's, who's just extremely tight? They're extremely stingy. And sometimes they actually have money, but they just, man, they just, they're, they're, they're not generous with their finances, with their time, with whatever. Those people oftentimes, it's like, man, there's something deeper in their heart. There's something deeper going on in their lives. Why is it that they're missing out on the joy of being able to be a conduit of blessing to others, right? Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Here's Jesus' first missions trip. He's, this is the first time that it's recorded that he sent his disciples on a short-term missions trip. He has the 12 and all of a sudden he says, hey, listen, guys, I'm going to send you all into the region, into the neighborhood, and I want you to bring the good news. People are hurting. I want you to go and encourage them. People that are sick, go and heal them. People that are demonized, go and, and, and cast out those demons from them. And then right at the end of his instruction to them, we find in Matthew 10, verse 8, in the MSG version, it says, you have been treated generously, so live generously. Another version says, freely you've received, freely give. In other words, Jesus says, I've already blessed you. I've hooked you up. Now go and pay it forward. Just recently, um, my wife and I were going through a Starbucks drive through and uh, all of a sudden we place our order and we pu pull up and we're going we're gonna to pay. And all of a sudden the, the person says, oh, the car in front of you already paid your bill. My first thought was, oh, man. I knew I should have ordered the bacon Gouda sandwich. Man, no, just kidding. <laughs> but all of a sudden, I was, I was just taken back. I'm like, wow, I mean, that's just so generous. Thank you. I didn't even know these random people. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, the least that I can do is probably pay for the people behind me. So I asked the guy, so I, I, I should probably pay for the folks behind me. And I'm just hoping it's not a minivan or a big old car behind me. And I'm looking and their bill was about the same as mine. I'm like, man, I'd be happy to do so. Obviously, freely I receive. The least that I can do is pay it forward. And that's what Jesus was encouraging his disciples to do. Gratitude. It's such an important value. It's such an important quality that we should, we should all cultivate, that we should all pursue. Having the attitude of gratitude. How is this expressed? When people are blessed, these are some of the things we already talked about them being happy and then being generous, but how do they express their thanks? Maybe a coworker did something kind for you. What do you do in return? Maybe a family member did something for you and it just it ministered to you with such a blessing. What do you do in return? There, there's an instinctive thing within us that, hey, if someone treats us well, we should return the favor somehow, some way, right? These are some of the indicators. People will, will be blessed, and oftentimes when, when, um, when, when, when a blessing comes their way, they'll either offer words of affirmation, a thank you, maybe they'll jot down a card, send a text. Just right before I started recording this message, someone sent me a text thanking me for a gift. I'm like, hey, that's awesome. You didn't have to say things, but that's awesome. Makes me feel good too. Sometimes people will, 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 will shower, the, you know, praise as an accolade. Sometimes they'll send us gifts or send you gifts and they'll share of their treasures. It could even be finances or gift cards or present that they thought would mean something to you. Oftentimes they'll do something like an act of kindness. They're like, you know what? I just want to do this for you. And they'll, they'll come and mow the lawn or, you know, run some errands for you, whatever it would be. They want to express their gratitude by doing something that will be a blessing to you. That's one of the indicators that when you're cultivating a heart of gratitude, what, what drives you then is to then in turn be a blessing to others. That's part of what being grateful really means. You're grateful internally, but it's expressed with this heart that wants to be a blessing to others. Generosity is the natural overflow of a grateful heart. If you have a grateful heart, it's just gonna overflow out of you. However, if you have a stingy heart, nothing will come out. I, uh, not too long ago, I, I, I was hit up. Somebody was saying, hey, I need some help. I need some help. I need some help. They needed some finances. They needed some financial help. So they're hitting me up and sending messages left and right or whatever. And finally, I was traveling. All of a sudden, it's like I, I, I get these messages and I realize their predicament. And it's, it's real. It was a legitimate need. And so finally, through, through a messenger, we start communicating back and forth. So what is it? What can I do to help? What can we do? I talked to my wife and like, we're going to try to be a blessing to this person. And so finally, I'm like, hey, I'm jumping on Venmo right now. I'm going to send you some, some money via Venmo. 
And uh, so I sent it on Venmo, then I didn't hear back. So then a, a couple minutes later, I, I messaged the person. I said, hey, uh, I sent you the Venmo uh, uh, money uh, transfer and uh, uh, let me know if you got it. And then all of a sudden, bloop, a message comes back, got it. So I'm, I'm like, okay, cool. So we're able to help them. So I'm, I'm literally just kind of waiting for a few moments and waiting, waiting, still waiting. And there was no thanks, no thumbs up, no like, hey, it means a lot to me. Thank you for helping. Nothing, nothing. Not a text, not a message, not a call, nothing. Now, we would have still done it. My wife and I would have still done it for nothing with no thanks. But it, it, it's kind of like just like when, when you care about people and there's a connection, it, it's, it's kind of like, hey, if someone blesses you, the least that you can do in return is to say thanks or send them a card or something. And I found myself just kind of scratching my head and going, well, that wasn't fun, was it? Like we're, we're doing something to be a blessing and by the person not being grateful or at least expressing their gratitude, it, it kind of took the fun and it became just a negotiation. It became kind of like a transaction between people that know each other. And what a sad reality that is, that, that people would live in such a way where they would feel entitled that, no, you have to do this for me. Listen, I didn't have to do anything for you. <laughs> we chose to do it because we care. With or without the thanks, we still did it because we choose to be generous and we choose to be grateful. But man, in life, it is so much more enjoyable when, when we're blessed, we can turn around and express our gratitude however way you like to express it. I want to encourage you, don't be this person. This is real talk. Pastor John, John talking to you right here. But then there's the, the other examples and countless examples of people who are just absolutely overwhelmed and with gratitude. And then they express their thanks in so many different ways. Check out this brief video that maybe you've already seen. And it came out several years ago. And then there's been several spinoffs of other groups who've done the same thing. But kids, man, it's like childlike faith, man. When, when kids, kids are just so real. I want you to check out this video just for a couple of minutes and uh, check it out. This year for Christmas, what are you hoping to get? A computer. Big, giant, Barbie house. A trophy case. An Xbox 360. Minecraft Legos. What do you think your mom or dad want for Christmas? My mom would probably want a ring. She's never really had a ring. Jewelry. She loves jewelry. A new TV. My watches. So, we actually did buy an Xbox 360. What in the world? I wanted this! Okay, and you, you really got this for me? A new laptop. Wow, and it's a necklace. So we also bought a necklace because you said you also wanted to get a necklace for your mom or your auntie. The catch is that you can either get a gift for yourself huh? or you can pick a gift for your mom and dad. I need you to pick one. Now, now before you answer, Oh, I bet that's hard. Is that a really hard question? Mm-hmm. What gift do you pick? I choose this. I gotta go with the ring. What gift do you pick? That one. That one. That dress. I'll choose this for my mom. I'll choose this one. It's a really tough question. I'll give him this. You already know? Tell me why. Because Legos don't matter. Lego, your family matters. Not Legos, not toys, your family. So it's either family or Legos, and I choose family. I get gifts every year from my family, and my mom don't get anything. If I get a laptop, my mom will get something. She helps me when I'm sick. She helps me with my homework. She gave me a house to live in. They look out for me and do stuff for me, so I need to give back to them. Now I, I have the opportunity to give them something. Because you actually picked the gift for your family, you're actually going to go home with both. Tell me how you're feeling. I'm 
feeling really happy and what? thankful. Just happy. Thankful. For your family? For what? My family, everything. He did make his decision, actually. And oh he goodness. picked the Pandora Charm. Oh, that is sweet. That made me cry. So we you put music to me? Oh, it's for me? Oh, it's for you. Thanks, guys. I was going to. Wasn't that amazing? I'm like, my gosh, like who cut the onions up in here? It's like, ooh, my eyes are a little watery. It's like, oh my goodness. You know, but the heart of these kids where they have the option to either hoard the gifts for themselves or they realize how much it would mean to their family or their parents or whoever. So rather than keeping it for themselves, they're like, no, I'd rather give it to my mom or give it to my dad and one of them was saying how like man my parents have taken such good care of me and they've been so good to me and I, I want to do this for them see that's the heart of someone who is cultivating gratitude when you realize as pastor Danny was preaching last week when when you realize that man we truly are blessed God has been good to us and all of a sudden we we can actually count our blessings the reality is the glass is half full for people that are cultivating a heart or an attitude of gratitude. But the glass will always be half empty when you feel like the world owes you, that God owes you, like you're entitled to these things somehow, some way. It's like you earned it and therefore they're going to pay. I want to encourage you. That is a difficult life to live. The person who actually is cultivating the heart of gratitude, their life is more enjoyable. You may not have a lot of stuff, but you are rich on the inside and that's what really matters because at the end of the day when we are graduated into heaven into the presence of God we can't bring any of that stuff with us anyways what we bring is our our, our memories our relationships how we felt when we impacted someone else's life that's what we get to bring into eternity so it's not about accumulating, but it's about having a heart that truly cares for others, an attitude of gratitude. Now, check this out. I did some research a while back, and these are what I would call the benefits of gratitude. And uh, Amy Moore, and she writes, and she wrote this article for Forbes magazine, and the title for, for her article was this, Seven Scientifically Proven Benefits of Gratitude That Will Motivate You to Give Thanks Year-Round. So this was written several years back, but these are seven benefits. And I, I'm sure I could come up with many others and probably you could as well. But these are seven that Amy writes about. She writes this. When you're cultivating a, an attitude of gratitude, number one, gratitude, it will open doors to more relationships. You feel like you're a little lonely. Maybe you need some more friends. As you express gratitude, it actually will start networking you with others. Number two, gratitude, it improves physical health. Amazing how God would do that, right? As you receive and you give out, it actually brings physical health. Number three, gratitude, it improves psychological health. So talking about soul care, how's your heart? How are your emotions? As you're parting with God, because remember, God is a generous God. He is a giving God. As you receive and then you forward it to others, man, it just stimulates life within you. Number four, gratitude, it enhances empathy and reduces aggression. Number five, grateful people, they sleep better. If you're having a hard time sleeping, maybe you just need to start thanking God and thanking people some more. <laughs> Number six, gratitude, it improves self-esteem. That's awesome. And then finally, number seven, gratitude, it reduces stress. So maybe if you're stressing out a bunch of stuff, maybe you need to slow down and just jot down a list of things that, that you can be grateful for and maybe the stress will begin to lift just a little bit. I wanna give you some action steps as we close, close out the sermon today. Some practical things that I think could help you as we all continue to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. And maybe, maybe you looked at that video of those kids and go, man, my kids are like that or maybe I'm like that. Or maybe you heard the example that I shared of someone who didn't express a whole lot of gratitude. Use that as an example of what you don't want to gravitate towards. Like we don't want to go into that unhealthy kind of a place. And sometimes life is so overwhelming. We got so much going on that we find ourselves in these places, but God still comes after us. There's hope for all of us, right? Four steps very briefly here. 
Four steps in developing an attitude of gratitude. Number one, choose to see the glass as half full. It's your choice. For you, is life miserable? Perhaps it is, but you can still count your blessings. You can still give thanks to God for a variety of different things. When I pray and I, th I thank the Lord, probably the most important thing ever is, God, thank you for, for creating me, but thank you for rescuing me from sin. Thank you for, for, for giving me a new life, an eternal life with you. Thank you for that. God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be my close friend, my, my best friend. Thank you, God, for my family. I thank you for my wife. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for my extended family. Thank you, God, for my church. Lord, I thank you for my team. And I start thinking about the different people that God's brought into my lives. Thank you for, for San Francisco. God, I get to live and pastor in the best city in the world. I love this city, God. Thank you that we get to do life and ministry here. And I start thanking God for all these different things. Thank you for health. Thank you for hats. When we've lost hair, thank you, Jesus, for some gray caps that we can wear. And all of a sudden, rather than looking at life as a cup, half empty. You can see it as a cup half full. It gets better from here. Number two, choose to see, or excuse me, celebrate the small things. So number one was choose to see the glass half full. Number two, celebrate the small things. Man, any win is a win. I don't care if you win by, by one point or a thousand points. A win is a win. Choose to celebrate those wins, those small moments, those small things. Number three, keep a gratitude journal. As I read and researched and, and, and looked up information from different, different authors and specialists, many of them said the same thing. Jot it down. It's important for your mind to remember and to rehearse your breakthroughs or your good experiences or your positive experiences from before. And as you read through those things, it's a reminder. Wait, if God has done this for me thus far, he's going to continue to help me moving forward. So oftentimes when you have a journal, and maybe some of us don't like to journal, Bust out your phone and under the notes app, perhaps, just jot down, I'm thankful for, and then just start writing down the different things or people or experiences, whatever it is that you're grateful for. Finally, number four, express your gratitude regularly. Maybe you're not a, like an extrovert. It doesn't matter if your personality, if you're an introvert or extrovert, we can all be thankful and we can all express gratitude in many different ways. Whether it's sending a note, Posting a message on social media, sending somebody a gift, or doing something that is just kind for them. Whatever it would be, begin to practice and cultivate this activity of, because you're grateful, I'm going to do something to bless others. Now, maybe to help jumpstart you, I would challenge you into what we call the 21-day challenge. <laughs> There's all kinds of different challenges that you will find online. But maybe for the next 21 days, you should just post a little something, maybe tweet something or, or, or post it on Instagram or Facebook. Like, I am thankful today for fill in the blank. And they say that if you do something for 21 days consecutively, it'll become a habit. If you're kind of, if you're struggling in, in cultivating an attitude of gratitude, maybe just begin to express your gratitude by just posting something every day. Watch what will happen. All of a sudden, you're going to start feeling better about yourself, better about life, better about where God is leading you. In the midst of a crazy season like the one that we've lived in this year, there's still way too many things for us to be thankful for. As I wrap up, I want to give you one final verse. Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica, and he says it like this in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. He says, be thankful in all circumstances. doesn't matter if you had a good season or a terrible season. It doesn't matter if your sports team is doing well or if Clay Thompson is out for another year. It doesn't matter what's going on. Be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. In other words, God is instructing us. We're called to be thankful. I want to encourage you, do your part. God has lavished us with love. He has lavished us with blessings. We need to be a people that reciprocate and we respond to him with thanks and we respond to others with this heart of gratitude. Amen. Hey, let me pray a blessing over you as we close things out. God, we love you and we thank you so much. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, God, that you continue to chase us down. Even when we screw up and we make mistakes and we fall, God, you're so gracious. You're so generous. Thank you that you come to lift us up. Lord, even today, I pray a blessing over each viewer that would be watching and those that would be listening to this message. I pray that faith would, would fill their hearts, that courage would be infused into their spirit, man. Lord, that we would come to a realization that we are blessed by you. 
God, thank you, Lord, for placing a new heart within us. And Lord, we want to have this heart be a heart that is filled with gratitude. So Lord, continue to work in us. Give us a heart that is like Jesus's heart, a grateful and a thankful heart. And God, I pray that you would use us to be a blessing to those around us. We speak these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Amen. Hey, have an awesome week. We'll see you next time. Man, what an amazing Sunday. What an awesome word. Pastor John John, thank you for blessing us, for feeding us some spiritual food. Hey, if you were a guest with us for the first time or you made a decision perhaps to follow Jesus, we would love to know about it. Would you mind texting CLC Connect to the number 97000? We want to send you some information. We want to get to know you. And ultimately, we want you to become a part of our City Life family. Don't forget, if you want to get baptized, you can do so by signing up at citylifesf.com slash baptisms. If you want to go public with your faith, this is the next step for you. So make sure to hit us up so we can give you all the information necessary. Hey, if you are a brand new parent and you have a little one that hasn't been dedicated yet, we're having a baby dedication. So make sure to go to our website and sign up. All right, folks, that's all for today. Thank you so much again for joining us. We hope that this service blessed you, that you are leaving encouraged and full of faith. If you need to keep up with any other information or updates or news from City Life, make sure to follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, sign up for our newsletter, and we will be back next week. God bless you. So I run to